Good morning. Welcome you all to the class of organizational behavior. I am Dr. Shushmita Mukhopadhyay, Assistant Professor, Vinod Gupta School of Management, IIT Kharagpur. I am the area coordinator of the course Organizational Behavior, Human Resource Management and also Business Ethics. Welcome you all to this session. Here we will try to understand what is organizational behavior and it will be a journey for us to know the different aspects of organizational behavior and why it is important, how it helps us more specifically as a management student or in our daily life also as a practitioner in organization, how the knowledge of organizational behavior helps us to be a better performer in the organization and day to day interaction with people in the organization and also how it helps the organization to perform in a better way. This whole course, this journey of us that is me along with you for this course of OB will be for 40 hours and this whole session is divided into sub parts or rather sub modules which are six modules along with different sections of it and I will take you first through the course contents. As you can see the whole module is divided as I told you into six modules starting with first which is the fundamentals of organizational behavior where we will come to know the very basics of organizational behavior and it is divided into three sub modules. First understanding organizational behavior, second effectiveness in organizations, third social systems and organizational culture spread across four hours, one hour, one hour and two hour for the social systems. Secondly, we will go through the module of understanding and managing individual behavior and it is spread across the lectures like individual differences and work behavior, personality, attitudes, perceptions, attributes and emotions, motivation, job design, work and motivation. Also evaluation, feedback and rewards managing misbehavior, stress and counseling. Third, we will move to the group behavior and interpersonal influence and it is spread into sub modules like informal and formal groups, teams and team building, managing conflict and negotiation, power and politics, empowerment and participation, assertive behavior. Next, we will move into the module of organizational processes which consists of communication, decision making, leadership. Next, we move into organizational design, change and innovation which consists of the sub modules of organizational structure and design, managing change and innovation and lastly, we will cover the emerging aspects of organizational behavior which consists of one module only sub module which is organizational behavior across cultures. This will be the total 40 hours of the lecture. Each of the modules as you see and the sub modules over here will be followed by questions to be answered your self test questions so that you can answer and see whether you have gained the concept of OB properly or not, whether you have learned what is OB and organizational behavior in short we call it OB. This is the one of the basic courses that we do in the first semester in the business schools so that we get to understand this is one of the pillar of the courses that we do basic courses so that we get to understand what is organization because all of us who will be joining organizations would be managers and also other institutes 
we need to interact with people, we need to work in groups. Moreover, we will join organizations and organizational behavior is that basic course which will help us in these interactions. With this, today in the first session, I move to the first sub module, first chapter which is understanding organizational behavior and we will start with this chapter, chapter 1 which is understanding organizational behavior. Now, if you see this title itself, it consists of three words understanding organizational behavior. If you subdivide it, there are three parts to it. One is understanding, then organizational and of course, behavior. So, we can take it like we have to understand what happens, why it happens, how it happens, when it happens and all these questions. With this understanding, we are going to understand what? We are going to understand behavior which happens in organizations. And you may ask the question or this question may arise in your mind like why we need to at all study this subject? What is the value of this subject for us? Is it only for the purpose of study or it has some practical implications also in our life? For that we will move through the, we will just review some of the roles that a manager has to play while he is in the organization and we will see those through the 10 roles that managers play while they are in the organization. Firstly, what is the objectives of this chapter before we go to the managerial role is if you can see it is listed it is understanding the meaning of organizational behavior, understanding the fundamental concepts connected with organizational behavior, understanding the basic approaches of organizational behavior, framing the study of organizational behavior, understanding the goals of organizational behavior and knowing the importance of organizational behavior for managers. So, though it is listed last like knowing the importance of organizational behavior for managers, maybe we will start a bit of the discussion with that itself, the last which is listed over here, why a manager needs to know what is organizational behavior, what this knowledge of OB is going to give you, what extra mileage if it is, it is going to give to a person who knows, who has studied the course organizational behavior and the person who has not systematically studied the course what is organizational behavior. For that, let us have a look into the 10 roles that the manager plays in an organization. As you can see, a manager plays roles like which for, falls under the heading of interpersonal contact first is a role of a figurehead where the manager performs some symbolic duties and ceremonial duties as the head of the organization. Means maybe he is signing some documents or he is representing his organization, he is a symbolic head. Next he plays the role of a leader where he tries to keep a proper work atmosphere in his organization and he tries to motivate and develop his subordinates. It is one of the primary function that a manager has to play. Liazo, he develops and maintains a network of external contact to gather information. This role is also very important like a manager has to gather information from the outside from the external environment and he has to maintain a network with other organizations or people in other organizations, these networks help the organization to get a competitive edge. So, these roles are very important as far as maintaining interpersonal contact is concerned for the better performance of the organization. Next we see the roles listed under the heading of 
information processing. Here you can see he is like a monitor where he gathers information both from internal environment and from external environment which are relevant to the organization. Now, information relevant to the organization if you take a look into these words is very important. It is not only gathering information, but it is gathering relevant information. So, that the manager has to decide, he has to know like okay, this information is important for my organization and maybe this is what I can leave for the time being. So, he has to like use his own judgment for understanding what is relevant to the organization or not. This emanator transmits factual and value based information to subordinates. So, he transmits information either to motivate people or to make them know certain things which is going on in the organization because everybody in the organization now wants to know what is the organization doing, what is its future plans, what the people, the top people are thinking about how to move the organization forward, every employee wants to know it. And it is the role of the manager to transmit these important informations to the employees. Now, again he has to decide like can we give all information to everybody or we have to decide which information to give to what level of the people. Next is spokesperson where the manager has to communicate to the outside world on the performance and policies of the organization because everybody from the outside world the the shareholders or rather in the broader sense the stockholders before investing before like trying to know wants to know the environment wants to know more about the organization and it is the role of the manager to communicate to the external world like on the performance and the policies of the organization because now everybody loves to know like the whether the organization is transparent enough or not. Next is the role of a decision making where you can see first listed is the role of the entrepreneur where he designs and initiates change in the organization. This is very important if the organization wants to excel, if it wants to survive in the market then it has to of course, change itself according to the needs of the environment or changing flow of the environment needs arising from within the organization and outside the organization. And the it is very important to design and initiate this change. Disturbance handler deals with unexpected events and operational breakdowns. So, this may happen at any time in the organization, you do not know from where the challenge is coming and the manager has to deal with these challenges faced in the organization. Resource allocator, he controls and authorizes the use of organizational resources. Resources are more or less minimum. And we have to get our maximum output with this limited resources so that there is no wastage, we have to reduce wastage and one the prudence of the manager lies in how best he can utilize and allocate these resources and whatever resources it is and it is one of the important job of a manager. Negotiator. The pa he participates in negotiation activities with other organizations and individuals so that both can arrive at a win-win solution. This is also another important role for the manager. Now, if you review these roles, all the 10 roles that we have come across now from interpersonal role to decision making role coming through the 
information processing role, you can understand like it requires various skills on the part of the manager, various abilities, skills at different levels, knowledges on the part of the manager and we can group it like technical skills required means the ability to apply specialized knowledge or expertise, human skills required the ability to work with, understand and motivate other people both individually and in group and also conceptual skills required the mental ability to analyze and diagnose complex situations. Now, if we just see like when we are talking of the technical skills where it is the ability to apply specialized knowledge or expertise, it depends on the nature of the person, it depends on his cognitive level, it depends on his IQ like how best he will be able to apply specialized knowledge or expertise also it depends on his level of education specialization and other things. Human skills the ability to work with understand and motivate other people both individually and in groups depends on his social intelligence how best he can interact with other people whether he is an introvert whether he is an extrovert some parts on his personality patterns also. Conceptual skills, the mental ability to analyze and diagnose complex situations again depends on the cognitive ability of the person concerned. So, you see these require special abilities of the individual like the manager when he is per do performing or skills require abilities and these. So, what we are doing is we are focusing on the individual's psychosocial parts, his psychosocial behavior and also we when you are talking with like how he is performing both individually and in groups means also we are talking somewhere about the group behavior and all these things happen within an organization. Now, you may think of then what exactly is organizational behavior, what are we studying, are we studying the individual as a person or we are studying the group where uh, different individuals come together or we are studying the organization per se, what is the subject matter of organizational behavior. Here we come to see like as you can see it is we will tell like organizational behavior consists of a study which consists of everything that the queries that may arise in your mind because and it is a very flexible field of study because you see organizations themselves are very complex systems human behavior itself is very unpredictable and we can partially understand human behavior. There is no perfect solution to organizational problems and in an organization employees do not have the luxury of choosing that I am not going to work with the other person. You are assigned a job, you are assigned a role where while performing while playing that role you have someone as your subordinate, you have someone as your superordinate and you just cannot say like I will not be interacting with this person. Do you think like life is becoming complex like oh, life in the organization is like a snake ladder sort of like while we are moving up and it is not what we look from outside the simple thing going on. So, maybe from external it may be seeing that is a very smooth running organization everything every happening is falling in place, but from the inside it may appear to be so complex. These complex which appears from inside 
appear smooth to the outside people because we follow the organizational behavior properly. If we know like how to deal with people, how, wh what is the nature of a person, what is the nature of a group, what is the nature of the organization, wh what is the organization being asked for from the environment, these questions if we have and if we have proper answers to these queries, then maybe the smoothness appears in the organization from outside, but from inside it is really a very complex world and the knowledge of organizational behavior helps us to perform or helps us to make this life easy for us. It, it has a great application for the organization. With this we will come to the, maybe with this backdrop we have come to understand to certain extent what is the meaning of organizational behavior and you will find what we are just starting with organizational behavior is a systematic study. This word systematic is very important. It is a systematic study of human behavior, attitudes and performance within an organizational setting. So, you find human behavior, attitudes and performance within an organizational setting. That setting consists of jobs and design of work, communication, performance appraisal, organizational design and structure. Psychosocial, interpersonal and behavioral dynamics in the organization that is what we were discussing when we were discussing the skills required by the manager whether it is a technical skill, human skill or the conceptual skills it depends on the psycho, psychosocial, interpersonal and behavioral dynamics in the organization. Drawing on theory, methods and principles from such disciplines as psychology, sociology and cultural anthropology to learn about individual perceptions, values, learning capacities and actions while working in groups and careful application of knowledge how people as individuals and as groups act within the total organization. So, this is a very like broad sentence that we have tried to discuss over here and we will try to break it up into smaller parts and try to understand what this paragraph speaks of. So, if you can see it is telling like it draws its theories, methods and principles from such disciplines as psychology, sociology and cultural anthropology to learn about individual behaviors, perceptions. So, you see it is a this subject is a multidisciplinary subject. It draws its essence from various fields, whether it is psychology, which gives you an understanding, better understanding of what is human behavior, what are the components of human behavior, why a person behaves in certain way in certain situations. Next, it is sociology, which tells about the society at large, group, social behavior cultural anthropology, what are the values, cultures, perceptions, etc. To learn about individual perceptions, you see the focus is on individuals perceptions, values, learning processes, learning capabilities and actions while working in groups. Working in groups is very important because when you join an organization, you are no more a single individual you perform in group and group behavior affects individual behavior and also the individual's behavior affects group behavior. So, this communication, this understanding, this dynamics of the person with the group and the group's effects on the individual's behavior is very important to know and it is one of the primary focus of the organizational behavior subject. And it so that because it is this primary focus is there because it is connected with the performance of the individual, the group and also in broader sense the organization itself. 
analyzing the external environment's effect on the organizations and its human resources, missions, objectives and strategies. So, this is one of the important facts also the external environment in which the, organiza the organization does not exist in a vacuum. It is there in the space there is there are other organizations, there are agencies which are also keeping an eye on what that organization is particular organization is doing. There is government, there is what we call as stakeholders, there is the general society at large, there are environmental concerns. So, everybody have their own concerns and from their own viewpoints they are trying to judge what the particular organization is doing, what are its missions, what it wants to do, what are its visions, like how it is dealing with its human resources, everything. Everybody is trying to observe and form an opinion about the organization. These opinion of the external environment about the particular organization matters a lot for the growth and survival of that organization. So, we always have to as managers, we always have to monitor the, we always have to sense this is called environmental scanning. Like what is going on in the environment, what changes are happening in the environment, what is the demand of the environment from the organization and we have to change, we means the organization has to change accordingly. So, this is also another important aspect of organizational behavior. So, in a nutshell, in a gist we can tell that the organizational behavior highlights on several aspects like number A, it is the way of thinking. So, you can observe, you can understand it has different levels of analysis, individual, the group and the organization. So, individual can be the unit of study, group can be the unit of study or the organization as a whole can be the unit of study for in the domain of organizational behavior. This is a multidisciplinary subject which draws its essence from the theories and models of psychology, sociology and cultural anthropology. These are three basic subjects from which the OB or the field of organizational behavior draws its theories. It is humanistic orientation. It assumes that individual feelings, attitudes, perceptions, goals, etc are important to the organization. Because it is organization is consists of human beings, it is the human beings who come with their own knowledge, ability, skill, own perception, own personality pattern, it, their own mental and physical get up whatever you tell and they join an organization, they interact with others in the organization to perform and bring some output for the organization. So, the feelings, attitudes, perceptions, goals of the people within the organization are very important. The field of organizational behavior is performance oriented. If you notice like number of times I have been telling like individuals performance, group performance, organizational performance. So, the field of organizational behavior is performance oriented focusing on whether and why individual group or organization performance is high, moderate or low. The field of organizational behavior helps us to get the answer for this why, why a performance is high. If it is high, what are the factors leading to it? If it is moderate or low, then what are the factors leading to it? And what could be done to improve those factors. External environment,
external environment that is how the external environment substantially impacts the organizational behavior. The use of scientific method plays a critical role in organizational behavior research and of course, it the subject is application oriented where it is concerned with providing useful applicable answers to management problems. So, it is not that we are studying the subject without any purpose, but <coughs> we are studying it with the purpose of providing useful and applicable answers to management problem. The words useful and applicable is very important. We have to find answers so that these could be applied. Otherwise, finding solutions which are so like costly solutions which cannot be applied is of no use. So, useful applicable answers to management problem is what OB helps us to find. Fundamental concepts connected with organizational behavior are first is the nature of people. In that the first listed thing is law of individual differences. Each person we have to understand there is no one solution that we can apply to everyone in the organization. Each of the people are different from each other. They have their own perception, own values, own attitudes, own personality pattern, different things which motivate them. So, finding one prescription to guide everybody is not possible. Again, then what if we are to find out solutions which are each organization may be having thousands of employees. So, do we answer to each of them differently? So, how to apply to a come to an amicable solution like we know like there are individual differences then we need to maybe clap different people under different groups so that we can find out somewhat a generalized solution, but it has to be specifically oriented to the individual needs also. So, the nature of people like their law of individual differences, perceptions, there is a whole person, they are motivated to do certain things, they have a desire for involvement and value of the person, the person each person is guided by certain value system. Now, in the consecutive chapters that we discuss, we will discuss each of these things separately, because we have to understand each of these listed topics in details to understand the nature of the person in a proper way. Because once we understand the nature of the person, why the person is like this thing, this sort, what he wants, what, what motivates him, what is his attitude like, why he perceives in certain way, then we can interact in a better way with that person. When we can interact in a better way, we can communicate better, we can connect with each other in a better way, we can exchange our thought process in a better way, a better bonding is formed between the individuals and as a result they can perform well together. <coughs> Next is the nature of the organization. So, you see like it is listed first is it is a social system, organization or social system where individuals come and join a group and they join the organization per se in at a broader sense. And there are mutual exchanges of thought process, emotions, values, ideas and they come to form a bond with each other. So, it is a social system, it is a very complex social system, it is not that its life is very easy, there are conflicts also, there are stresses also and we have to deal with these things while being in an organization. It is an like mutual interest group, people join an organization because each of can complement the interest of the other person and like they are mutual interest group from ethics. The values of the organization, the rights and wrongs for the organization matters a lot. 
specifically in present business context. Like we just can't do whatever we want to do because we want to gain profit. We have to be more concerned with the people within the organization. We have to be concerned with the demands of the external environment. We have to business environment. We have to see whether we are polluting the environment, the atmosphere at large or not. What is that we are giving back to the society uh, from where we are getting our resources. So, it is more not the business that we do, but more so the way that we do the business, the process that we do the business is more important and the issues of ethics are important in this. These ethics deal with certain areas where there are decision and dilemmas like whether we go in this way right to a right path A or whether we go through path B to gain the ultimate outcome. So, the outcome the it is not that is very important, but the way the process that you take to reach that outcome that is really very important for the organization and it comes under the purview of ethics. We while discussing the basic approaches of organizational behavior, you see the first approach is human resources supportive approach. Now, the word supportive this emphasis I have given in just separately to understand like it is not enough to have policies for the people within the organization. But whether the environment, the organization is supporting the growth of the human resources, whether it is supporting the development of that human resources, these are primary concerns of the employees before they join any organization now, because everybody wants to grow, everybody wants to see that they are, they are developing. The organization which provides this environment, which has a human resource policies regarding this are considered as better place to work in. So, human resource supportive approach like employee growth and development towards higher levels of competency, creativity and fulfillment are encouraged and supported because people are the central resource in any organization and society. Contingency approach, different managerial behaviors are required by different environments for effectiveness. So, as I was discussing earlier, it is not that only one way, one stereotypical way of behaving will help you to get the effectiveness. Effectiveness of the organization is our next lecture, uh, lecture 2. So, we will discuss that in details, but just over here a few words on it. Like one stereotypical behavior is not going to help you. As a manager or as an organization, we have to sense the environment, we have to know like what type of behavior is wanted, what is environment demanding, and we have to answer to the demands of that environment with the behavior pattern that suits us, that suits that environment to get the things done. So, that is contingency approach where different managerial behaviors are required by different environments for effectiveness. Results oriented approach, outcomes of organizational behavior programs are assessed in terms of their efficiency. So, whether you have taken a applied all the organizational behavior principles within the organization in a proper sense or not, whether you are following the principles of organizational behavior or not will be evident from the results means the output that is gained in terms of efficiency. There is a slight difference between the two terms when we are talking of effectiveness and efficiency efficiency deals with doing it in the right way. 
effectiveness deals with doing the right thing and effectiveness your efficiency deals with doing it in a proper way. So, next comes the systems approach. All parts of an organization interact in a complex relationship. System approach takes an across the road view of people in organizations and analyzes issues in terms of total situations and as many factors as possible that may affect people's behavior. In this what we consider a person within the organization is a part becomes a part of a whole system where at a certain point of time he gets stimuli from different sources. And while we are trying to understand a person's behavior, we have to take into consideration all these aspects. We just cannot say a person is behaving in this way um, because it is due to factor A. It may be due to factor A, B, C, D, whatever n numbers each acting separately or in unison on the person and that is why it is uh, because of these interactive things, it is the unison of all these things that the person, a particular person is behaving in a certain way. So, before we try to look into a person's behavior, we have to understand the of this complex situational effects on the person's behavior. So, the study of organizational behavior involves number A, the most important the organization's environment. Like it is we were telling it is the outside the environment organization there is an environment which deals with the needs of the society, demands of the customers or clients, legal and political constraints, economic and technological changes and developments interact with the organization and the management of an organization must respond appropriately to it. If we are able to do it, the organization survives, if you are not then you are gone. So, the effect of environment is the primary effect that the organization and also the managers have to be more concerned about. Next comes the individuals in the organization. Individual performance forms the basis of organizational performance. The four key influences on individuals behavior and motivation are first individual characteristics like personality, attitudes, perceptions, values we will discuss each of these separately. Individual motivation interacts with the ability to work to determine individual performance. Number C, it is the rewards and punishments. Use of behavior modification techniques to enhance performance and control misbehavior. So, control of misbehavior if you go through the like older books of OB, you do not find it the misbehavior in all workplace. This has been a very recent addition because we need to when we are talking of behaviors in workplace then misbehavior in workplace is also one of the major issues that people are facing in the organization and as people from the field of OB we are trying to find answers to why people behave misbehave in workplace and what corrective actions can be taken to modify it. Next the stress faced by the individuals in the workplace. Life is not without stress. If you are joining an organization, whatever type of organization it is and whatever job you are doing, you cannot deny that there is no stress. Stress is there, but is every stress negative? Maybe we will try to find out what is stress, whether it is positive or negative. If it is negative, then how to deal with it so that we can like 
function properly within the organization. We cannot stop being stressed. It is not possible we will tell okay, there will be zero stress, but what we can do is try to know those techniques which will help to keep the stress level at a optimum level or a, if it is a uh, like positive stress and negative stress, we will try to minimize that. Number C, it is the interpersonal influence and group behavior. Interpersonal influence and group behavior affect organizational performance by number A, the group behavior, the dynamics of formal groups created by managerial decisions. This is what you join in and find like when you join an organization, you join a formal group and informal groups developing around uh, members common interests and friendship. These are friendship groups that you develop because you may be travel in the same bus, you will travel, in, you stay in the same locality, you come at the common, you, you go to, to the canteen at a common point of time, you have same interest, anything can lead to these formations and how these affects the functioning of the organization. Intergroup behavior and conflict groups can cooperate and or compete with each other in organizations. Conflict resulting from competition may be either functional or dysfunctional depending on the organization. So, we will cover each of these things in detail, not that every conflict is bad, but conflict may be good also for the purpose of the organization. Only thing we have to remember like when you are dealing with conflict, it should be aligned with the organizational purposes. C is power and politics in the organization, the dynamics and effects of power, authority and politics in the organization. These are complex behaviors that occur in the organization and we just cannot deny that it does not happen. Whenever there is an organization, there are organizational politics and politicking. There, there are power games. This is reality, we cannot deny it. The organizational behavior, the knowledge of organizational behavior helps us to understand this dynamics in a better way and deal with these situations. So that at the end of the day, we are better performer and also the organization is a better performer. I am repeating these two words simultaneously, individual performance, individual development and organizational performance and organizational development because the individual's growth and organizational growth, the alignment of these two things is very important. Otherwise, different conflicting situations may happen which may lead to the like the orga, poor performance of the organization. OB helps with the focus on the individual behavior no doubt, but that focus should not be so great that ignoring the organization's performance in mind. So, there has to be a balance between alignment of individual growth and organizational growth. Organizational number D is organizational processes structure and design, which is a formal pattern of activities and interrelationship among the various subunits of the organization. It includes organizational structure, the components of the organization and how these components fit together. B is job design, the processes managers use to specify the contents, methods and relationship of jobs and specific task assignment. C, organizational processes, four behavioral processes that contribute to the effective organizational performance. First is leadership, it is important for obtaining individual group and organizational performance. So, it is the define, it is sometimes straight oriented, behavior oriented, combination of these things. I am not going to the details of each over here because we will study organizational structure, job design, 
organizational processes in the forthcoming chapters like leadership. Communication is a very important process and which is like links the organization to its environment and links the part of the organization with each other. Decision making process like how individuals decide how the group decision making occurs, these are very important processes. Organizational change and development process means plan attempts to implement change that will improve overall individual and group you know, organizational per, group performance. It involves the study of organizational structure and design and managing change and innovation. These are important subtopics to be discussed in the forthcoming chapters. If you can see observe these things like this diagram over here which is the basic OB model. If you see there is a human input means when an organ um, individual is entering an organization he is coming with his abilities, values and attitudes, personality and emotions and biographical characteristics. These biographical characteristics again helps in developing the personality and emotions and all these things if you see the observe the arrow it leads to the perception formed by the individual's motivation and it helps in individual learning and these together helps in individual decision making which again influences the perception of the individual formed about the group about the organization. These perception the individual communicates and these communication is a linking pin when which where we move from individual level to the group level and with these communication again the change in perception occurs. When we communicate then we communicate it to a group and group structure the nature of group affects communication. The leadership and trust present within the organization, the teams that we work in, the power politics, the conflict all these influence each other and helps in group decision making. Leadership and trust factors like it is the linking pin again to the organizational structure and design and this gets is like influence from the organization's culture. Organizational culture back way affects both communication and the values and attitudes that the individual form within that organization. Again this they again affect the values and attitudes communication again affect the organizational structure and design and these again affect the human resource policies. Human resource policies also affect organizational structure and design. So, what you find over here like though we will be studying each of these chapters or each of these factors mentioned over here separately for the sake of understanding those things in details. But when it comes to individual behavior or group behavior or organizational behavior per se, it is the interaction of all these factors which helps the perception or which helps behavior to happen and it leads to an output, human output in the sense of productivity, absence, turnover, deviant workplace behavior, organizational citizenship behavior or satisfaction which we will be again studying in forthcoming chapters. So, interaction among all these things, all these factors is very important. You just cannot say this is happening only due to this at the individual level. Even when you are discussing individual behavior, you have to take into focus the group level and the organization level factors. Whenever you are talking of group level factors, you have to take into your consideration individual and organizational level factors and simultaneously in this way. The goals of organizational behavior 
are to describe systematically how people behave under variety of conditions, to understand why people behave as they do, predicting future employee behavior and control at least partially and develop some human activity at work. These are the four important goals of organizational behavior. Next is why OB is important for managers to conclude because we have already discussed this to organizational behavior provides a useful set of tools for the managers to understand at different levels of analysis. It helps managers to look at the behavior of individuals within an organization. It aids their understanding of the complexities involved in interpersonal relations when two people are interacting. It is valuable for examining the dynamics of relationship with small group both formal teams and informal groups. If two groups are interacting with each other what are the factors like which how to coordinate these activities is another important concern for managers. When one organization is interacting with other organization what are the factors that is helping this inter organizational relationship the knowledge of OB helps the manager to understand these factors also. These are the questions like for your self learning, what is the meaning of organizational behavior, explain the contributions made by various behavioral disciplines to OB, describe the fundamental concepts connected with organizational behavior. What are the four basic approaches of organizational behavior? Describe the framework of the study of organizational behavior with reference to the OB model. Describe the goals of organizational behavior and justify with examples the importance of the knowledge of organizational behavior for the managers. If you are able to find answers to these questions, not only from the small discussion this the overview that we had now, but from also from your practice if you are able to connect this knowledge answers to these questions from your practical life examples what you observe observing what is happening outside around you maybe with you start you can start from your family because that is the first organization that you can observe like organization which you are born per se, your working organization, your school, colleges, wherever you are studying. If you are a good observer, you can find lots of examples which you can tally with and find answers to these questions and the subject matter that you learned just now to gain a better understanding of what is organizational behavior. Thank you.